it's, it's solid. That's all it needs to be. It's solid. All right, everybody, we have round number 11 coming up. You might be wondering why we're not watching Nathan Stoyer and Carl Sarup this round, our co-leaders of the tournament. That is because they are not playing. They have taken an intentional draw. We'll talk about that more after this round. For now, I'm going to send it over to Marshall and Paul for the final round of draft. Wow, Maria with the bombshell at the end there. We'll have to wait and hear more about that intention. What round is it, 11? <laughs> a little early. It's a little early for that. But as, as mentioned uh, at the desk also, we do have the next round lined up, and we've got uh, Yuen Chen versus Luis Scott Vargas. Now, Luis, he came over to Paul and I, and he said his deck was middling. Average? Yeah. Right? I, like a two and one? Yeah. Right, would be like... Okay, and we're going to see if he can get that right now because yeah. he's already somehow managed to uh, get two victories with a blue-black deck. Now, you might th be thinking, wait a minute, he's got blue-black? Like, what's the problem? I, I'm not 100% sure, but it feels like he forced it through a little bit, Paul, because the power level isn't there, but he has enough playables. Yeah, it's not your traditional kind of more controlling blue-black deck, which is often what you see when somebody's happy with their blue-black decks. It, it actually looks kind of similar to his blue-white knights deck from yesterday that he went 3-0 with. And basically, with what his deck is trying to do is just curve people out. He's actually playing Protocol Knight, which is not a card you typically see in a blue-black deck. Tells me he was likely a couple of playable short. Mm -hmm. But again, it's one of those things where he's got a good curve. He's got just maybe the right amount of interaction to kind of push him over the edge. That's kind of what we saw with Nathan Stoyer. We might see it again here with Luis. Now, you and Chen has a really cool archetype that doesn't actually come up that often, but when it does, if you get the right pieces for it, it can be really strong. And this is a play that you're going to see a lot here. You and Chen on two mana plays Ral Ral's reinforcements. Why? He has four of them Jeez. in his deck, and he's playing all of them, and that's because he's playing red, blue, and he is gonna try to convoke some big stuff out for real cheap. And Arouse Reinforcements is the easiest way on two to get you to that level. Yeah, that's absolutely the two drop you want. You want probably as many of those as you want in the blue-red convoke decks. Lots of great payoffs there. Um, you know, removal spells, counter spells, card draw spells, all kinds of things um, that you can do. And it all kind of starts with getting creatures onto the battlefield. He does have a copy of Preening Champion 2, which is the best common. Look at look at this start. I mean, can't get through just yet, right? This Oracle of Tragedy is kind of brickwalling everything. But, I mean, he's setting himself up, if he has some Convoke spells in hand, to have some potential really explosive turns. There's eyes of, of, of Getaxius there for Luis Scott Vargas. And we have a little bit of a standoff here right now. Um, nobody really has any yeah. good attacks. So now there's a, there is a Mirren Bane Splitter in UN's hand. So he could just attack with all five creatures cast the Bane Splitter and put it on the cre on the Oracle, right? So that'll kind of clear the board in a sense. Uh, the other option would be to play a Hangerback Scrounger and just kind of get a Rummage, right? To try to hit some more land drops given that he's got that Fearless Scald in hand. All right, Yuen Chen's gonna send in the okay. squad here. And as you mentioned, the Bane Splitter can come down at flash and equip at instant speed. Yep. So those will trade, but in the meantime, he does get in for three and clears off that one three blocker. So. I would call that a reasonable exchange for both players. Yeah. and he Favors does, Chen. Does have the ability to move the Bane Splitter here with the help of that Omen Hawker. Not the most explosive turn here with Ewan, given his start and the archetype that he's in, right? Right. You're, you're, you got double Raz reinforcements, and then you want to be able to play payoff cards like Artistic Refusal. He doesn't have one. Oh, I know. Yeah. He, he actually is missing most of the blue Convoke payoffs that you would really want. The cards he has are Assimilate Essence. He does have an Astral Wingspan. Okay. So that can help him sure. get going. He's got two Afar's Dispersal, which are just a good card. Right. He's got the Omen Hawker you see. He's got a Preening Champ, and he has his Elfir and Shapecraft. So, so not a ton of right. You're hoping cards. for meeting of minds. You're right. hoping for artistic refusal, and uh, he doesn't have them um, at all. Yeah. So interesting matchup here because when we talked to Luis, and uh, you know, he said, "Well, I have to play the other two to a player in my pod. They're probably going to have like bombs." And he said, "I have to get under them, right? Low curve out, tempo them out, and just squeak squeak it out over the finish line." 
interestingly, he's not actually facing a deck that is bomb laden and going to have this like amazing late game. They're both kind of meeting in the middle. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're kind of trying to do the same thing. Yeah, right? they're like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try to curve out and 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 get under you now. Luis's deck that has a bunch of uh, cheap creatures, uh, several of them being X ones, and these reinforcements are pretty annoying to deal with. They really are. Ooh. Printing champ there you see for Chen. He just has one copy of that. Yeah, but, but that'll be a nice little threat going forward. Yeah. Now you have four damage coming in every single turn. Luis does need to find an answer for that. Currently doesn't have one. I mean, look at his hand. It's just a bunch of great ground creatures. You have a couple of Kothis of Aetherblade Agent. Normally a fantastic card. Not as good in this matchup. Again, like I said, yeah. four copies of Rao's reinforcements. That's right. You're really going to look to transform those and Oh, that carries its own risk with it. But Grafted Butcher, very, very powerful effect. Yeah, it has that static ability pumping everything up. It can enable a huge attack the turn you cast it, though. That isn't the case here. And then it's just difficult to get rid of. You can see it has the activated ability right. from the graveyard, and it just kind of keeps coming back. Yeah, it, it kind of perfect for Luis's it is. kind of unconventional, somewhat aggressive Demir Phyrexian's yeah. deck. Now, the Aetherblade agent here, as you can tell, is not uh, a Phyrexian. It is a human rogue. However, for any of the flip cards, if you do transform them, they all turn into Phyrexians. Yeah, that's kind of the joke, right? This yep. is them turning into a bad guy. Unless you're pro Phyrexian, in which case... <laughs> yeah. Then <laughs> turning into something, something slightly better than right? they were. I mean, they are better, right? You can't argue with that. <laughs> you may not like their motives, but uh, the power is there. Are we just going to go all in on here? this champion here? Just put yeah. everything... Looks like it. Chen might just think, well, I can just use these small creatures to basically make it impossible for Luis to run me over on the ground in any short order. And if I'm chipping away with the Preening Champion, maybe I can get the job done. Yeah, and this is a three-turn clock here, right, mm -hmm. with the Preening Champion. This is an attack for five, and Luis is at 14. Luis looking to find some way to deal with that threat. If so, he would be ahead. Right? It's just a bunch of 1-1s one on the ground for Chen, and Luis has some nice plays going forward with the Aetherblade Agent transforming. He's already got a 3-3 that's been attacking. Yeah, the pressure is on Luis, however. Definitely. It does feel like Yuen is slightly ahead here on the in a racing situation. And with the extra mana provided by the Omen Hawker, Yuen can kind of play offense and defense here with the Bone Splitter. Luis does have a final flourishing in his list, which we have not seen yet. Bane splitter, excuse me. What do you say, bone splitter? Bone splitter. Well, you know, you're, it's you're an equipment. School. It gives you're plus two, plus zero. Come on. Nobody That's can blame you. That's a bone splitter. You. Nobody can blame you for that. All right. Whoever wrote the name for that card is like, got him. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, fearless scald there. Fearless Scald, so that... Would that create a lethal threat? Yes, although the mana's not there. Yeah, so, so then that's where you wonder, was it actually correct to move the Bane Splitter? Yes. Because had it stayed onto the Preening Champion, oh, next turn, Yuen could simply have gone land, Fearless Scald, pump up the Preening Champion, and that would have been a lethal attack. Can he still do that with the Hawker? I believe it's three mana to move. Okay, so not so quite. he is one mana short. Yeah, he's playing for a slightly longer game then. Yeah, you're right, Paul. Three to three to go. I mean, if you're gonna move the bane splitter, this is a four four, so it kind of makes blocks a little bit awkward, mm -hmm. right? With yeah, but Luis is just looking to clear out that ground game, but right, Chen. I mean. Plenty Especially if you're going to give up the ability to right. present lethal next turn with a top deck land. You, you, yeah. you committed to this. Absolutely. Oh, and Luis, of course, with... Oh, he's got Bladed Battle okay. Fan here. And oh, that's going to come in. Right. And a Temporal Cleansing here on the Preening Champion. It feels kind of bad to use Temporal it Cleansing does. on a creature that has an ETB effect. It does. But you but also knock off the counter. Yeah. 
Is he going to do it? I, I see some creatures being tapped here. Yes, he, he is. is. Yeah, this is a smart play from Luis. He knows that at nine life, things can get a little bit hectic. And this is really devastating for Chen, right? He went from potentially having the win next turn right. to now he's way behind. The printing champion's going to get tucked, if, especially if this isn't a land. So if we look at what's on the board here, this is a potential attack for five on UN side of the battlefield. If he plays the Fearless Scald, that does mean that Luis will be forced to block with the Butcher. But Luis might be okay with that because it does have a nice enter the battlefield effect where your yeah. Phyrexians also gain Menace. Yeah, you know, that the could Omen be Hawker's done his job. Yeah. I think we could sacrifice that to get back his Lord as well as that temporary Menace effect. I mean, maybe that printing champion is too late anyway. Right. And this, okay, there's land this number five. double removal spell turning things around here for Luis. This is interesting to me, too, because, you know, Luis, with all of his Pro Tour experience, is watching Yu and Chen do combat math. And I guarantee that Luis is thinking, okay, he's thinking if he can kill me. Right. You know, and therefore it must be Scald. Remember, the players do get to look at the pools of the other players' draft, so Luis will have an idea. Yeah, so you can put a counter on the Scrounger, attack for six. You don't have a lethal attack. The question is, what happens if Luis just blocks with the Butcher? and puts it back into play. It looks like we're only attacking with the Scrounger, so you will have enough blockers in place here. Luis is like, you know, I, I don't feel like taking six. I know you have a preening champion up top. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and chump block there. This was the line that Luis took last turn. And the Scald is a 3-2 double striker, right? But remember... That 3-3 three, three Incubate token is a f will be a 4-4 four, four if Luis does return to Butcher into play. Right. But right now, it is only 3 toughness. That's right. So can't attack just yet unless he puts the, the Butcher back in. Or just kills the Scald. Did he find a third removal spell? No. OK. All right, well, that but mills. This, but this is going to mill the Preening Champion. This does mill the Preening Champion. Okay, informant gets the ra <laughs> look at the graveyard. Four rails reinforcements. That's funny. Drew M drew them all, that's, all of the tokens. That's all of them. But I'm. I'm but Luis has pumped the brakes here, right? And without the flyer, I'm kind of liking Luis's side of the battlefield here. Luis can um, even if UN chooses to equip the Scald, Luis can simply block with the informant and then sacrifice it to the recycler, right? That'll buy him a lot of turns. So Yuan wants to find some kind of evasive creature to force damage through. This is a good, this is a really good game to watch for planning ahead your turns for Luis, right? Like right. knowing that, okay, I can mill this preening champion. Block and, and sack. There we go, block and sack, it's the classic. Right. So that's 10 down to 12 here for Chen. And if the games go longer, Luis has things to do with this mana with a couple of Aetherblade Agents in play. Definitely. Right? You can flip those into 3-3 three, three Death Touchers. Furnace Gremlin's going to hit here for Chen. And Chen still, of course, has to be mindful that the Phyrexian Butcher is in the graveyard. Now that there isn't a three, there isn't a three-two double striker on defense. Luis could attack here if he wanted. Yeah, and now this is a what five-four menace creature that's getting in. Pretty nasty. UN could so can just choose to go for a double block here, maybe, just to get the creature off the battlefield. Yeah, each of yeah. these blocks that we've seen from our players have signified to us 
how they see this game going forward. Oh, that's a flyer. Is that a Xerix Strobe Knight? That is. Though probably going to be hard to turn it on. I don't think Luis has any cards left in hand. Yeah, that could be difficult. Still a yeah. nice threat. Nice threat, but, but UN is also trying to slowly but surely chew through chump blockers here with a 5-2 double striker that's in play. Lethal. Yeah. So what's getting in front this time? An agent? Right. Real cards have to start right. going away now. Yeah. No card. And Luis says, I got nothing. You and Chen said, no cards in your hand? And Luis can simply sit with his arms folded and uh, hope that Chen doesn't just, find some way to kill I think Luis him. is just on the block sack, block sack, get you for three every turn and hope that's enough. Yep. Yeah, we may see a blighted agent matter at some point here. I mean, Chen can't keep blocking forever either. Right. Okay, looks like the Furnace Gremlin and the Fearless Scald are going to get in. Yeah, the Fur Furnace Gremlin can... How many mountains are in play? Because remember, Omenhawker can also, also help if there were four mountains in yeah, play. Yeah, you're right. But uh, as it stands, only the, yeah. the three. But th even so, UN can pump it three times, and if there's a trade, you can use the Omenhawker to then turn that into a 4-4. Four -four. Yeah. And it looks like Luis is content to let the, uh, the Furnace Gremlin through. Grafted Butcher jumps in front. I mean, it makes some sense. That's the card that can come back. Right. But this does chew up your board, right? It does. It does. But not a ton of Phyrexians in play. Boy, Luis would love to see Final Flourish here just to make his life so much easier, right? <laughs> right. Like, it's just that one really good threat that's getting in. So a couple of pumps there from Chen. Luis is down to Only eight. Only a couple of pumps. So what is this? Are we moving... It looks like we're moving the Bane Splitter over so that in case Luis decides to get aggressive mm -hmm. and flip one of the Etherblade agents and attack to draw a card, get some pressure in. Then but there's a trade. There's possibly. only one blocker here for UN, so I'm wondering, you know, is there some kind of a way here where Luis can try to muster up enough damage for lethal? We got three in the air. The Recycler could be a menace threat if you get the Butcher back, right? Yeah, he's got eight power on the board as it sits just straight up. I, w I don't know how many cards UN has in hand, but I'm also worried. The only with one blue up, you always have to respect uh, as far as dispersal. It looks like zero cards in hand here oh, for zero Chen. Cards. Luis, right, okay, however, yeah. has just drawn a swamp. So we're sacking the Omen Hawker. Then it looks no, no. We're just flipping. So he's actually going to sacrifice one of the Blighted Agents to bring back So this is an attack for butcher. six, and three of which has Menace. It's a big attack. All right. This and he's getting really and close, And he's still though. leaving mana up here. What can he do? There's an Icker Drinker in the yard. Must be. Must have been milled from the um, Unsealed of the Acropolis. Yep, that's one of the cool little, little combos. Okay. Hey, this gives him a lot to do. Now, the Drag right. Recycler did attack, however, yeah. so he won't be able to activate it this turn. Right. But can put a 3-3 into play at instant speed. Has Luis found enough oh. blockers? So the beat stick. He drew the, the Beamtown beat stick. So the beat stick now means the Scald will, will be able to eat two creatures. Mm -hmm. So what is that? That is a 4-2 double striker with Menace. Yeah, and it must be blocked as Luis is at 8 doesn't have the recycler to but get him not, above. Not moving the Bane Splitter over. I'm wondering if Luis can kind oh. of. Yeah, well, it's lethal, right? Right, right. So, so I'm just wondering, is there some kind of scenario where you can double block here? It's a 4-2, right? It is. Um, you have you can make a 3-3 token if you activate, and it looks like. Yeah, it doesn't work, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it'll kill the. Oh, no, it would work, actually. Yeah. But, but Luis but going for the double board. block just so he doesn't die, yeah, right? Yeah, he would lose it all. Everything he put in front if he did that. Okay. okay, back to Luis. Wow. Both but this flyer is just, just going to go all the way, right? It does look like it. And he's just going to yeah. jam with everything. That should be enough. If, yeah. if UN has nothing, he can only block one of these creatures that's attacking. Three in the air and three will get to on the ground. Wow. 
What a game. What a close one. That was so close. Either player, it felt like during the middle section there, could have drawn one high Anything. impact card a and it would have been like, spell? boom. Yeah, right? just a removal spell. Kill your double striker or kill your flyer. Really well played by Luis Scott Vargas to find the victory there, though Chen made it really difficult on him. Yeah, definitely. Applying pressure. I mean, he attacked for lethal four turns in a row yeah. and forced Luis to come up with something. There's Icker Drinker on turn one for Scott Vargas, but <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate Icker, Icker Drinker stopper here, Ral's reinforcements. Feels bad. There's a yeah. drag recycler. Both players with yeah, nice curves here. We got turn two reinforcements into turn three preening champ. For who? Whoa! Am I reading that right, Marshall? What do you see? You see the top card in Yuen's hand? Ooh, I do that see that. That is an exciting card. Chandra. Yeah, he does have a Chandra Sh Hope's Beacon. That like, that's is the type of card last game <laughs> that would have changed yeah, things so a little like bit. So, like a removal spell or maybe a Chandra, that would also probably right. get it done. Yeah. That would have worked just fine. It was really fun watching that last game, though, because it was ultimately just a very fair fight. Right? Yeah. Like, nobody did anything that was like, oh, come on, the game's just over now. Right. They had to actually grind it out. Though that might not be the case this time if Chen gets up to six mana. <laughs> Luis would love a land here. We're looking at multiple two drops that Luis can play if he wanted. Oh, and he that's finds good. It. It's because he has the Strobe Knight in play. So now he can go Grafted Butcher, attack you, flourish your premium champion, and make a 2 2. He also could break up a double block. Yeah, absolutely. If Chen decides to try to get rid of that Dreg Recycler. Right. If you go double block here, you can sack your Icker Drinker, right? Mm hmm Or even the 2-2. Two -two. No, no, you can't. You can sack the Icker Drinker, and then... Or just flourish. Well, if you flourish the 4-3, it's still 2-1 and a 1-1, so it's still kill, it would kill. Yeah, it would depending on how the block right. plays out. But yeah. this is a fine trade for Luis. He trades off half of his Icker Drinker for half of Aral's reinforcements, gets in for the damage. Yep. My game two right. And he gained two life because Icker Drinker's I imagine Icker you're going to just kill this flyer here, right? I mean, you kill the flyer and you get, oh. He had another two drop. He had another blighted. two drop. All Agent. right. Wow. And he gets to make a 2 2 knight on top of it. What a turn for Scott Vargas. That a land huge, was clutch. Huge. This is what he meant by the, by going under. Now, that's not really what's happening here because Chen is going toe to toe with him. But look at what Luis did in by turn four. Yeah. Right? Th this is the type of thing where I could be looking down at my hand and be like, I have this, some great six box. A uh, six-drop bomb, oh. and it's too late. Ooh. So UN is kind of putting all of his eggs in a basket here, putting Astral Wingspan. However, we know that Luis has a final flourish in hand. That will come in extremely handy. Karsus Depth Guard is huge. Yeah. Could attack, but doesn't. Nope. Got to stay back here. I think especially with that Chandra in hand, you kind of just want to survive if it's close, right? Definitely. Although he is pretty far away from casting Chandra. He is. Oh, tempo is that oh wow, oh, what boy. a draw. Jeez, and he and he still has the final flourish in hand. He can too. still final flourish and attack and make a token. This is just way too much. Wow. Incredible efficiency here for Scott Vargas. I mean, over the last two turns, just with his four mana, he spent like at least ten mana and then made two. 2-2 two, two creatures for no mana whatsoever while I mean, affecting Zerik's, the board. Zarek Strobe Knight. That's a card. Doing so, so much that work here. That is a here. very real magic card. So strong. I'll tell you who's jealous of that card is Chen, because <laughs> he could oh, really yeah. go off with one of those. Absolutely. Oh, no. Another Rouse reinforcements and no land drop. That and, is not going to do it for Chen. Desperately He's, just trying to survive here. Dang. But I mean, he just doesn't have it. <laughs> There's land number five. He's going to play it, pay the four mana plus the two life to transform the eight Etherblade agent. Right. So might see a bounce there. But even then, I mean, what kind of. You're just blocking to survive at this point. That's right. And it doesn't feel like he has anything he can do if he does survive on the next turn. Even a land right. drop doesn't what, get him you, out. You of put. It. You, oh, is he, is he looking to bounce the. Bounce the Butcher? 
If you block like that and you bounce the Butcher, then you can kill. Because right now, that's a 4-4 Death Toucher. Yeah. You would think, given the amount of mana it takes to play it and flip it, that's something to consider to bounce with the Dispersal. And then you can put two on the Butcher and two in the Recycler. And they'll shrink back down. They'll shrink back down, but then you'll go down to two. He's going to take the middle ground here. He is still going to get rid of the So he goes down to transformed. One, right? This is a... He's taking... Seven. Yes. Yeah. Now Drag Recycler also is just lethal if you just untap. Yeah, so th this really leaves no way out here for Chen. With the amount of mana that he has with Luis presenting lethal on board plus via Drag Recycler, I, he, he strangely needed to get rid of the Recycler and yeah. not the Butcher. And, but even if he did, I mean... He's not looking Right, good. especially if we're getting an Incubate token that yeah. can attack uh, next turn, too. Yeah. yeah. This is just too much. That's tough, man. Chen missed like four, three or four land drops there. He's going to extend the hand. Luis caught Vargas. 6-0 and oh at limited. 6-0 and oh at limited. And I mean, uh, even just when speaking to him before the tournament, he said, you know what, Paul? I've done lots and lots of drafts. He has. Over 100 drafts at least preparing for this event. So he came here ready. Yeah, he absolutely was ready. He felt very confident about his uh, abilities in limited. And he led the limited meeting for his team. And now you can see why. A clean 6-0 for Luis Scott Vargas. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, though, we'll have more here from the Pro Tour Minneapolis. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to coverage here at Pro Tour March of the Machine. Marshall Cycliff with Paul Chion. And we are in the limited portion, getting down the stretch here on it as we're kind of seeing who's going to win their table. We just saw Luis Scott Vargas uh, in our main match there pick up the 3-0 uh, the with his blue-black deck. And uh, we're going to join the next one in progress. We've actually, we're actually going to pop in starting with game number two. And this is uh, Andre Judd versus Quintanole on the left-hand side there. These two gentlemen, eight and two right now, Paul. They are sitting in a really good spot, particularly if they can close out their table here and move to nine and two, sleeve up that standard deck and try to make a run. You won't need that much. Three match wins, assuming you win this one, will lock you for top eight. Yeah, three, three match wins is a guaranteed and Potentially could see a scenario where you have two and a draw at the end, right? Just given the number of players. So, yeah, fantastic position, but it all starts with getting the 3-0 in this pod. Okay. An average length 10-minute game for the first, uh, first one went to Andre Judd. 
And that means that we're going to jump in here in game two, like I mentioned. You see the Icker Drinker from Quinn is going to not only hit the battlefield, but it's going to get turned sideways as well. And no two drop, at least yet, for Quinn. Andre led things off with a planes. He's also playing islands. It's a good archetype, although no two drop isn't really where you want to be. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have a play. Right. Could, uh, could have assimilate essence. Yep. Very, very commonly played blue counter spell. Counters most things that you want in this format. And it gives you a consolation prize. Yeah. All right, Skittering Surveyor is going to hit the battlefield for Quinn. I'll let you finish up. Not the most high impact play here on three, but it can definitely set you up for down the line. Absolutely. Yep. Some slower starts here from, from both sides. <laughs> so nothing yet from Andre. We, we got to see a three drop here, or else I'm just going to go on kind of a rant on people keeping yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hands with no plays on turn four. As it turns out, he has four. the ultimate three drop ball. The ultimate. Skittering Surveyor. Now I feel bad for wanting to go. <laughs> I will wait for you to finish. I just have a weird thing where if my opponent is touching like their neck, if they're shuffling, I don't don't like taking my turn. I want them to be paying attention. That's, that's so there. Nothing's missed. Courteous okay. there from Andre. Yeah. I don't know. I'm used to just like fetching and burn in modern. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, Quinn was saying he plays a lot of modern. Yeah. Mm. And since there's so many fetch lands and shuffling, you kind of, while you're finishing shuffling, your opponent will start their actions. But Andre was saying, eh, I kind of like it when my opponent's like paying attention. I don't want to do something and have them go, wait, what? So he went and got an island. A couple of nice. Creatures on the battlefield for Quinn, if he ever does find um, some sacrifice outlets, right? <laughs> some fodder for sure. <laughs> oh, look at this attack. <laughs> Skittery Surveyor. The audacity. Oh, it was a free roll, he figured. I like that attack from Quinn, but uh, Andre sniffed it out, came up with a big block. Flitting Gorilla is going to be the follow up here for Quinn. Looks okay. Just an okay, start chipping away okay, in the air. okay filler card, but it does uh, have flying, flying which is nice. Yeah, that's an alabaster host okay. sanctifier. That's the life linker. A little delayed draw in there on the uh, sanctifier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you look at this board, you wouldn't assume that they came out in that order. Yeah, and but it's interesting did. that that was your play on turn four. I'm curious what else Andre could be representing here. Meeting yeah. of meeting of minds is the card that kind of comes uh, to mind. Uh, Definitely. If it's on turn four, this is your, two. Yeah, that's right. That's I, right. Would he have countered the surveyor, right? That's the question. I feel like on turn two, if you had the option between the alabaster or the assimilate essence, you just play out the two drop. Essence will be good at a later point in the game. But it's it's too bad if your opponent just doesn't play something yeah. and you just didn't play a permanent on, uh, on turn two. Um, oh, my. Is he going to cast a hoarding bro broodlord right what? now? Oh, my. How about an eight drop on turn five? Where, where's the, the, I mean... No assimilate uh, essence. <laughs> he definitely doesn't have assimilate essence. We have confirmed yeah. that. Maybe he's still he... saving it. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for something better. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. One of the best rares in the set here. Massive threat. Seven six flyer in the air. He's now going to get to demonic tutor. He gets to look for any card, but it's somehow even better. It stays exiled. That's that right. card right there, and he can cast it whenever it wants. It doesn't matter what happens to the dragon either. I guess the only downside is you can't discard it. Right. So <laughs> but why would you discard the best card in your and, deck? Um, yeah. And white, uh, at least in blue white, not a ton of ways to do with the Broodlord, right? Blue just has a lot of ways to bounce. Not the best. Stasis Field would be decent, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. This is a tough spot for Andre. Seal of, of Existence. Just right. Seal from Existence Seal from would be existence. good. Yeah. Just thinking of cards that Andre could have here that could allow him to fight this I mean, Brood Lord. Realm Breaker Scrolls. Oh, 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 how about Sunfall? I, you know, I didn't how consider that Sunfall? one. I didn't consider that one. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, I mean, look, one good rare deserves another, right? I mean, we're looking at two players with some exciting rares. They're 2 and 0. Oh. I want to know some goodies. what the exiled card is, though, right? Because did he <laughs> set up to make the board state he had better? Or did he set up a backup plan for, like, well, if you kill my dragon, I'll just get my second best threat or whatever? Right. Sure. Unsealed the Necropolis, maybe, but, I'll, of course, in uh, Sunfall Exiles. I know. It's so brutal. Can't even brutal. get it back. So brutal. 
left behind a 6-6. You mentioned that the creatures that Andre had left over were kind of fodder anyway. Well, they became counters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a death toucher in play, so even if you activate the 6-6, can't really attack. Unless oh, you do Realm this. Oh, Grass okay. will uh, change the equation on that right quick. Now you can most definitely okay. attack. Check for six, I have you at 16. Uh, I have at 16. Down to 16 goes Quinn. Go ahead. I want to know what the card is. Because uh, a lot, a lot right. of times people just get like a removal spell. Yeah, it really just depends. It could be a deadly derision. Yeah. Whoa. Invasion of Innistrad? Yes, it is. Minus 13, minus 13. All right. Just a great card. It's just it's just a removal spell, right? And then you have, of yeah. course, the upside here of uh, being able to flip it. Make a zombie maker. Draw. Yep. Wow. Uh, there are yeah. some rares yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Boy, so far. Uh, Holy smokes. It it felt so nice and fair. Uh, Skitter is here. Me too. Right. right. And now all of a sudden it was like Broodlord. Oh, yeah, Sunfall. This, this oh, yeah, is, Invasion of This Venice is draw. wildly different from the last game. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was all comments. Oh, my oh. God, now it's Elish Nord. What the <laughs> heck is happening what? here? What? These are haymakers I've never seen in this Limited before. This is insane. And by the way, Andre just played the two best cards in Limited back-to-back -back in the whole set. <laughs> <laughs> he led with the best, and then he, he followed up with the second best. <laughs> Elish Nord, okay. Holy okay. smokes. All right, Quinn. You, you got to follow answer. this up. Okay, okay, Phyrexian Gargantua is a 2-2. A two measly 2-2. Two. Two, two. Now, we are playing against Red Black. Red Black has a lot of removal. That's true. I mean, Some deadly derisions, like maybe. Like, Quinn could actually come back from this. He absolutely can. And there's I apologize, Quinn. not that many you know, He just said, I apologize, Quinn. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Boonbringer Valkyrie no now? Way. What is happening? No way. This is unreal. That thing's a 6-6, six, six too. <laughs> this, is this a cube draft, Marshall? What's happening? That's better than the cube drafts I do. Yeah. This is just blue-white control. I'm going to see if uh, if Quinn oh. has invasion. Oh. Okay, okay, he did actually okay. find deadly derision. <laughs> oh, and a forest dispersal is going oh, I'm to I'm I'm really trying to keep it, it together here, Marshall. This is unbelievable. This is insane. I was really hoping that uh, Quinn has invasion of uh, Fiora. Fiora. Right. I'm going to look. I don't think he does. I, I just love the Andre just going, I'm really sorry, Quinn. That, that was really <laughs> never what you want to hear. <laughs> Wow, no, if Quinn can find a way to come back from this. Oh, that would be the all-timer. Yeah. I will take four. It's like, yeah, four. I beat the three best white rares in the set. Go. Three in hand. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I'm just assuming. That's the greatest one, two, three I've ever seen this is doing coverage three turns in, in I've limited. Ever That's unbelievable. Unreal. Does this count as a one, two, three, four since he gets to recast ah. Elish Nord? <laughs> Tech you for six, gain six, deal. All right, Invasion of Fiora. He doesn't have it, I looked. Oh. I'm so sad. Oh. Sure. Is this just to find a hard removal spell? Yeah. Oh, my. That cannot feel good. But he's he's dead to you the. You got to do what you got to do. But he's dead to the Valkyrie, even if <laughs> Elish Norton were to oh, leave. And Andre Judd frame that draft deck, my friend. I've never seen anything like that. So that was a deck. What That's, are the good cards yeah, in this okay. format? That yeah, look, one, that one, and that one. So you know, we often <laughs> like to say, no matter how good a deck is, you usually go, look, I know my deck is great, but I have a two-one deck. That might just legitimately be a 3-0 deck on average. Not right? it's just even like, close. More often than not, you might be 3-0-ing with that deck than 2-1-ing with that deck. His, his opponent play, <laughs> played Broodlord on 5 and went and got Invasion of Innistrad, one of the other best rares, and got handily Smoked. handled. Like, not close. Okay, well, we end with a bang there. We're going to take a break. Uh, we'll that back. was a good deck. We'll be back with more coverage here from Pro Tour March of the Machine right after this.